Yep. Which one are you? Uh, the roll of honor. Yeah. Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's, 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 we were trying to get the projector Tab set up for three. your PowerPoint. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> You know you're singing a panda, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, tab three. Three. Ward okay. three. Ward That's three, tab remember. three. There you go. Yep. Good morning. I am Councillor Loralee Carruthers, and I will begin our service this morning with land acknowledgement. Sorry, there, there's a really bad echo. Um, can we fix that? The town of East Squillenbury recognizes and acknowledges the land originally used with and occupied by the First Peoples of the Williams Treaty First Nation and other Indigenous peoples. On behalf of the Mayor and Council, we would like to thank them for sharing this land. We'd also like to acknowledge the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation as our closest First Nation community and recognize the unique relationship the Chippewas have with the land and the waters of this territory. We are the water, they are the water protectors and environmental stewards of these lands, and we join them in their responsibilities. On behalf of the Council, I am pleased to welcome everyone to the town of East Gullenbury's annual Remembrance Day ceremony, those here with us in person, and those viewing uh, the live stream version. Thank you for taking the time to share this important day with us to honor and to remember those who gave their lives, serving their country, and providing us with our freedom today. I am now pleased to introduce Vanessa Wang, who will perform O Canada. Vanessa.
Thank you, Vanessa. We are pleased to have with us today Scott Davidson, MP York Simcoe, Caroline Mulrooney, MPP York Simcoe, and our Mayor Virginia Haxon. Each will share a Remembrance Day message beginning with MP Scott Davidson. Thank you. Good morning. Today, residents of York Simcoe and all Canadians gather in remembrance of those who served our country and to commemorate those who gave their lives in the service of their nation. We owe everything we value most to the names carved into the memorials across the country, including those in the towns and villages within Georgina, Bradford West Gwillenberry, East Gwillenberry, and on the Chippewas of Georgina Island. Brave, selfless Canadians from all walks of life fought and died for the cause of freedom. It is because of their efforts, because of their value and sacrifice, that we enjoy the liberties we have today. The importance of their sacrifice has not been forgotten. We were all given a harrowing reminder just a few months ago when the world watched the situation in Afghanistan unfold. It was difficult to see the country fall to the Taliban after two decades of relative peace, stability, and security there. The peace and stability was something that Canadians had fought for and something that 158 Canadian Armed Forces members lost their lives to achieve. Across Canada, those losses are still keenly felt today, especially for the friends and family of the fallen in the communities like ours. Robert Wilson, Demetrio Deploros, Brian Collier, these three young men from York Simcoe made the ultimate sacrifice for Canada during the war in Afghanistan. Seeing what has happened has left some dismayed and bitter about our efforts in that country and the sacrifices Canadians have made. But we can't lose sight of the fact that their sacrifices helped to protect our country and its people and has made the world a better place. You only need to speak to one of the hundreds of Afghanis who have fled the country to come here in the past few weeks to find out just how much it means. Their gratitude and appreciation for the efforts and sacrifices of the Canadian Forces personnel is similar to that of the Dutch after the liberation in the Netherlands in 1945. We truly owe an immense debt to our veterans, especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice. On this Remembrance Day, take time to remember our fallen, reflect on their efforts, which has helped to secure a better, more peaceful world today and made our country an unrivaled place of peace, order, and good governance. We will continue to honor those who served and sacrificed for our country and ensure their lives, legacy, and the pursuit for a better world is never forgotten. I offer my deepest gratitude on behalf of the citizens of the Dominion of Canada and every resident of York Simcoe. We will remember them. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank the town of East Gwillimbury for organizing today's ceremony, and it's a pleasure to be joined by Mayor Virginia Haxon, Member of Parliament Scott Davidson, members of Council, York Regional Police, and others who are with us. Over the past 19 months, we've been through so much that it is wonderful to be able to gather together in person once again, especially for ceremonies like this that are so important to bring us together to pay our respect to our veterans. As Canadians, we are privileged to be citizens of a country that values our rights and our freedoms. And that is only guaranteed because of the brave women and men who have served this country. Throughout our history, our soldiers have stood tirelessly to protect Canadian values. And you can't help but feel a sense of awe 
by the enormity of what our Canadian Armed Forces and Royal Canadian Mounted Police have encountered and the perseverance that they have shown for peace and hope. Each and every day, these troops display their selflessness, courageousness, and dedication to our country. And for that, I admire them greatly. For those who have lost their lives protecting our freedoms, we will be forever in their debt. It's impossible to decide a way for one to truly repay the sacrifice our soldiers have made. But at the very least, we can honor them by remembering them not just one day a year, but every day. And that's why throughout the month of November, we all proudly don a poppy. But throughout the year, we all should try to visit our, our local legions to say thank you. So once again, congratulations to all involved for organizing today's ceremony. Thank you to everyone who has come to show your support for our veterans. I'd like to leave you with a quote from Prime Minister John Diefenbaker that I reflect on each Remembrance Day as it encapsulates what our vet veterans helped us achieve. I am a Canadian, free to speak without fear, free to worship in my own way, free to oppose what I believe wrong, free to choose those who shall govern my country. This heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all mankind. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. On behalf of East Gwillimbury Council, I'm honored to be here today to honor the women and men who served in the First and Second World Wars and the Korean War. And to honor all those who served with the Canadian Armed Forces who were injured or who lost their lives. It is also a time to honor those who still serve Canada today. We welcome together on November 11th because that's the date that marked the end of World War I, the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month. I also want to recognize the Indigenous men and women who served in the First and Second World Wars and the Korean War. November 8th is Indigenous Veterans Day and we continue to learn about the horrific findings of unmarked graves at former residential schools sites. There is such a feeling of loss and sadness. To the Indigenous members of our community, I offer my thoughts and prayers as we mourn the loss of your ancestors. Because of the veterans we honor, we enjoy the freedoms we have here today. We have a charter of rights and freedoms that gives us fundamental freedoms such as the freedom of thought, the freedom of religion, and the freedom of association. Our mobility, democratic, legal, equality, language, and other rights are also secure. As our community grows and we welcome individuals from around the world, these rights and freedoms are a gift so many hope for. And it is our collective responsibility to honor the people who set the path towards the rights and freedoms we are privileged to have today. More than one million Canadians fought for our freedoms. My father was one of them. Of those who fought, more than 45,000 people gave their lives and another 55 thousand were wounded. We cannot forget their contribution and their sacrifice. Each year we honor the day by wearing a red poppy. This year marks the hundredth anniversary of the poppy as the flower of remembrance. In 1921 the Great War Veterans Association which later became the Canadian Legion adopted the poppy. 
And more than a hundred years before that, records show that poppies grew over the graves of soldiers in the area of Flanders, France. Lieutenant Colonel John McCree introduced the poppy to Canada when he wrote the poem, Flanders Field, a day after the death of a fellow soldier. Poppies remind us of those who lost their lives serving Canada. They remind us of those who were injured and those who worked to support the armed forces. Ultimately, they remind us to never forget. We will remember them. With pleasure, I introduce Miss Audrey Donahue to lead us in the recitation of In Le Flanders Fields. Please join me, Audrey. In Flanders Fields by John McCrae. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow Between the crosses row on row That mark our place and in the sky The larks still bravely singing fly Scarce heard amid the guns below We are the dead, short days ago We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow Loved and were loved and now we lie in the Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us to die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Audrey. I will now present the Roll of Honor. Private Sherman Brock, Private Robert Buckles, Private Art Case, Private Ernest Cousins, Private Melville Richard Doan, Private Walter English, Lieutenant Frank Wesley Glover, Private Chester Hammett, Private Roy Hollingshead. Honorary Captain Reverend Oscar Irwin. Corporal Andrew Knowles. Private Wellington McDonald Lane. Private Radford Shooter Lane. Private Leonard Mann. Private Edward Morgan. Private Sidney Owens. Sergeant Frederick Pearson, Sapper Lyle Arnold Stokes, Private Fredri Frederick Taylor, Private, Fe Private William Thorogood. In World War II, Private Charles Ernest Bonham, Private Clifford Thor Theodore Bosworth, Lance Corporal Donald Frederick Clark, Gunner Clifford Fairburn, Lance Corporal James Wilfred Fountain, Flight Sergeant Clifford T. Johnson, Corporal William Fred Cavanaugh, Corporal Kenneth John Mason, Private Ivan George Pollock, Trooper George Archibald Riley, Flying Officer Donald B. Stewart, and Warrant Officer Jack Vincent Wilby.
Good morning, all. Act of remembering. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, or not the years of command condemn. At the going down of the sun and the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. I'll conduct the laying of the wreaths representing the Dominion of Canada, MP Scott Davidson. Representing the province of Ontario, MPP Caroline Mulrooney. Representing the town of East Quillenberry, Mayor Virginia Haxon. Representing the Mount Albert and District Legion Branch 382, Kathy Morton.
representing our indigenous veterans, we will now also lay a separate wreath. Representing York Regional Police, Deputy Chief Rouse, Inspector Jim Kilby, and Police Constable Brandon Vig. Representing East Gwillimbury Emergency Services, Deputy Chief Ryan Jago. With the following wreath layers representing the following groups, please come forward. I'm going to call you in the groups. Representing the Knights of Columbus, representing the Holland Landing District Lions Club, representing Mount Albert District Lions Club, and representing the New Beaver Shrine East Gwillimbury. Representing the East Gwillimbury Chamber of Commerce, 
the Sharon Temple Historical Museum Society, the East Gwillimbury Historical Society, Community Living Newmarket Aurora, and War Amps Operations Legacy. Representing the Mount Albert Village Association, representing the North Union Community Recreation Committee, representing the River Drive Park Community Center, representing the Golden Anchors Seniors Club, and the St. Elizabeth Seton Women's Guild. We have one final wreath to lay. Councillor Foster, would you please assist in laying that? If anyone else wishes to lay a wreath, please come forward at this time. At the conclusion of the ceremony, those who wish to do so are welcome to leave your poppy behind on the people's wreath here or on any other wreath here on display. Next, I am pleased to call forward Reverend Siddiqui Little Forbes of Sharon Hope United Church to deliver the blessing. Good morning. On this Remembrance Day, I offer this blessing. 
now leave from this place with renewed inspiration to seek after the good for all, showing mercy and establishing justice. This is the greatest offering we can make. Look with kindness on all who have served the cause of peace and to achieve and maintain our freedoms. Let us comfort and support all who suffer due to war and conflict. And let the gospel message of peace burn ever brightly in our hearts, our words, and our actions as we remember them. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Siddiqui. I'd like to introduce Vanessa Wang again to sing The Soldier's Cry and God Save the Queen. Shack one, shack two.
Thank you so much, Vanessa. That was really beautiful. Thank you again for joining us today, and thank you to all who participated in our service. A special thanks to our trumpeter, Amanda Chappelle, and bagpipes, Peter Fleming. This concludes our 2021 Remembrance Day service. Uh, you are welcome to leave your poppy on the people's wreath if you wish. Have a very good day. Thank you.